So as we move into Power Book 2 Ghost Season 3, this show will no doubt get a lot more darker, bloodier and more violent. As the series progresses, we're going to see family members and others fall to the game, either ending up dead or in jail. And the same could be said about each one of the Tohadas, because the stakes will become even higher, especially after Lorenzo kills Zeke. Monet still wanting out of the game, Drew, Diana and Kane all wanting to choose their own path and we've already started to see Drew taking this dark turn. Diana blowing up the family secrets, and then there's Kane who went against the family on more than one occasion, with Mecha mentoring him and the moves that he made against Tariq, but in the end realizing he is still way behind someone like Tariq St. Patrick. So in this video, we're going to start from the top of the family tree and go through each character one by one, starting with Monet and Lorenzo, then Kane, Drew, and finishing on Diana, but Tariq will be involved in each chapter as well because of his influence and importance to the Tohadas. And of course, we can't forget about Zeke's death, so this video will be a lot more in-depth, so down below in the description you'll find timestamps for each chapter and character. So with that being said, let's start with Lorenzo and Monet, and this image that was released by Alberto Colon, who plays Lorenzo. Now the bruised up face says it all, Lorenzo will be in a brawl or a fight or a scrap very early on in season 3, but the question is, who is he going to be in a fight with? because there aren't many enemies left that we know of. Most of the Guaps, if not all, are dead, and Mecha is also dead, but no doubt Power will be introducing a new villain or a new connect which the Tohada family still need, because there is still this vacant power vacuum left in New York, and who knows, maybe even Tommy could be the connect with Dahlia, but let's wait and see who gave Lorenzo this beating, because I'm sure the other guy would have taken one hell of a battering as well. We're starting with Monet because at the beginning of season 2, Lorenzo was in prison and Monet was somewhat still in control over the Tohadas, so she thought anyway, but from the beginning we saw her creating this exit plan which didn't include either Lorenzo or Kane, but she wanted to leave the game, so she moved the timeline up because she saw what happened to Drew at the end of season 1, and this is why she wanted to leave the game. It was more so to protect their kids, but the problem was, Zeke was their exit plan and there was even this hesitance from even Zeke himself to go pro at the time, because of his past history with injuries, but Diana and Drew didn't want to be defined by Zeke's career and Monet controlling their future, so we saw them making their own moves and going behind Monet's back, and all of this was happening under her watch, with Diana making her move with releasing Lorenzo and with Tariq and Effie as well. Drew was still seeing Ev and Zeke was taken in for questioning after dropping Officer Rumi as his name, he landed himself in a whole load of trouble, and this was all because Monet was distracted by Dante Spears coming back into her life. But Monet really was pushing all her kids too hard, and we all know what happens when you push too hard. Liliana said it to Tommy recently if he keeps pushing too hard, he's gonna start to lose people, and this is in essence what was happening to Monet. But Dante Spears gave her this comfort and another way out of the game which definitely had her mind all twisted because all it was, was a fantasy and she lost her focus on what really mattered, which was her kids. But at the midway point, she accepted Dante's offer, not knowing that Mecca was the man who was behind manipulating and playing this game of chess with Kane. But there was this huge shift that changed the game for the Tohadas in more ways than one, and that was Lorenzo being released from prison, which was thanks to Diana, again, one of the moves that she was making behind Monet's back, we then saw this power struggle between the two where Lorenzo came back as the head of the family and we all know how much Monet likes power and control over her kids, but I guess you could say she was someone who already lost control and Lorenzo being released was the moment he changed the dynamics of everybody's positions in the family from allowing Diana to go to college, upping Drew to his right hand man and forcing Kane to allow him to meet the connect Mecca and this forced Monet to lean more on her exit plan which never included Lorenzo and Kane in the first place which was Zeke. But with Lorenzo making his moves as the head of the Tard organization, we saw her leaning more on Mecca, whereas with Lorenzo, we saw him turn to Drew as his right hand man, and he wasn't stupid, he clocked the way Drew and Ev were looking at each other at the Tohada household, and this is why Lorenzo had Drew play certain positions, keeping him away from Ev, and telling him that nobody can be trusted outside of the game. But this was one of the major differences between Monet and Lorenzo, and why there was such a power struggle, they had different ideas and visions for the business, from wanting to leave the game to the positions that they had their kids playing, and we even heard Monet telling Lorenzo that they can have more. Look, Zeke's entering the draft this year. We could finally hang this shit up and live a good life safe. I'm never gonna live off another man. Ever. But this is the thing with Lorenzo, he's his own man and he would never live off someone else, especially someone like Zeke, who he didn't like anyway because he wasn't his son. But little did he know he was the son of Monet and Mecca, 
And this is where it gets a whole lot interesting for season 3, because even though Monet realised that her family was the Tahadas and not Mecca, it was too late. The damage had already been done, because she pushed Diana too far, but we're gonna get to Diana later on. But Lorenzo showed us traits of Kane. He acts before he thinks, especially with the move that he made with going after Mecca, thinking that Monet was either gonna run off with him or won't be able to get the job done. But instead of killing Mecca, he shot and killed Zeke. And this is a huge game changer, because he was Monet's firstborn, and he was also her exit plan, which Mecca ruined by the way anyway, by leaking his age to the press. But the death of Zeke and Lorenzo being the one behind it, is gonna cause such a huge divide at the top of the family tree, because once this secret is revealed, Monet definitely will want blood, regardless of Lorenzo being her partner. And as I mentioned before, Season 3 will get darker and bloodier, especially with the Tahadas, and my early death prediction is Lorenzo for a few reasons. Firstly, he's the one who kills Zeke, but we also need to see Lorenzo's death because this will pave the way for Drew to take over the family organisation, which they started foreshadowing ever since Season 1, but more so in Season 2. But coming to Tariq's influence, he will definitely have an increased importance with the Tahadas, and Monet made sure that they still needed each other, because she killed Mecca, just before he could wire Tariq's money, leaving him in the game. Albeit, I'm sure Mecca had plans on killing Tariq anyway, but in Season 3, I can really see Monet leaning more on Tariq because he made her realise she can't trust her kids, and Tariq is the only one who keeps his word, who actually was the sole reason why the Tahad organisation was running. But the one person who took a while to realise what Tariq St. Patrick could do was Kane. Now arguably there is a huge difference between Tariq and Kane, which is Kane grew up in the streets, whereas Tariq didn't, and this was one of the major reasons why Kane never took Tariq seriously, which is why we saw him calling him a silver spoon, meaning someone who comes from a wealthy or privileged background, but he was underestimating Tariq, because he didn't know Tariq like we did, but he soon realised. But let's look at it this way, Tariq grew up with a murderous drug dealing father, who is the biggest in New York, he also had a cold blooded killer as an uncle in Tommy, and also gained a best friend and a ruthless manipulator in Kanan, and also a mother who taught him how to lie in Tasha. But he's also seen so much death with his twin sister Raina, Lakeisha, him killing Ray Ray, and being responsible or having some part to play in all of these deaths that we saw in his dream, including Jabari and Kari. And I'm sure Kane has caught a lot more bodies, but he hasn't seen or been through what Tariq has. Now's not the time to act like you know what the fuck you're doing, alright? Because I know you don't. Listen up. I killed my dad to save my family. And another huge difference is, Kane hasn't had any mentors in the game. And you could tell with the very sloppy moves that he made throughout Season 1 and Season 2. For example, planting the badge in Tariq's drawer, not realising they were in this together. So if Tariq went down, he went down. And Davis McLean made that clear to him. But this is why we saw Kane seeking the mentorship and guidance under Mecca, because he was pushed out by Monet and Lorenzo, and he's never really had this father figure in his life, because Lorenzo's been in prison for most of his life growing up, and you could really see where he was ruthless behind a gun. He lacks a lot of intelligence, but something that Mecca was still trying to instill in him, and you could say he was becoming a lot more wiser, but he definitely still has a long way to go, especially to reach the level of Tariq. But one thing he does have over Tariq is the fighting skills, where Tariq does need to learn to throw his hands. But can we really see them working harmoniously together for the whole of Season 3? I really don't think so. And I do think we're going to see them start by putting their differences aside and working together. But Kane will always have this hatred towards him, and he really needs to get Tariq out of his head. Some shit you don't know. Like, why are you always worried about me? When you need to worry about what it is that you need to do. But having said this, I do think Kane will see him differently, especially finding out Tariq killed his own father. But with the internal conflict with the Tahadas, he's got a real battle on his hands with Drew, because both of them are going to be vying for top spot in the Tahad organisation, very similar to how Claudia and Vic are fighting for one position in Force. And we all know how Lorenzo prefers Drew over Kane. But I really do think the destiny does lie with Drew taking over the business, in a similar fashion to how we saw Michael Corleone losing a loved one, which played a part in him coming back and taking over. So with that being said, let's talk about Drew and his dark turn that we saw, more so in the second half of the season. Because as Lorenzo was out, we saw him turn to Drew and asking him what moves should be made. And we saw him taking the kill shot on Kino, and then killing Lil Guap. And his character was really getting darker and darker as the season went on. But it started with Drew rebelling against Monet and going behind her back with Ev. But with Ev still being alive, this is a huge problem for the Tahadas because he still knows way too much about them. And Lorenzo and Kane told Drew to deal with him once before, but we saw him, he couldn't do it. 
So Will Drew only learn his lesson when this results in a consequence for one of the Tohadas. Ev is definitely another factor which could pour more fuel to the fire with the Tohadas, and I can see Ev being an early death next season, either by Lorenzo or Kane, which will definitely turn Drew into a savage, and along with potentially being Lorenzo killed, this would then pave the way for him to take his place as a leader at some point in the future. But this is still a big issue internally with the Tohadas, because you can bear Kane will be fighting for top spot as well. And we've seen the brothers get into one tussle already before, and I can see them being at odds with each other again. So, Drew vs Kane and Ev's death in Season 3 is something we need to watch. But what about Diana and where does this leave her with the Tohadas? It starts with a snowball effect from Monet wanting out of the game and being distracted by Mecha to push in too hard with her kids, especially when it came to Diana. And this is what pushed Diana onto working on Lorenzo's release, which she kept a secret and she did that to benefit herself because she wanted to go to college and Stansfield specifically to be closer to Tariq. But this is what each of the Tohadas were doing. They were making moves that were benefiting themselves, from Monet trying to leave the game, Drew with Ev, Kane with Mecha, and Diana having Lorenzo released, which didn't exactly go to plan for Diana herself. But the huge talking point when it came to Diana was this scene. But before this, Diana actually found out the truth about Zeke being Monet's son, and she actually gave an opportunity to Monet to come clean one-on-one. -on -one. But Monet kept shutting her down because of the move that Diana made behind her back with having Lorenzo released. Now Diana showed her smart, showing how she's just like Monet, something that Kane said to her. But she also somewhat has blood on her hands because she needs to take a fair share of the blame for Zeke's death because she exposed Monet's secret and where she was explicitly told not to look into Mecca's bag, she couldn't help herself. But Diana revealed more than just Zeke's truth, she dropped a bombshell when it came to Monet, Kane and Drew which also in return revealed a secret of hers, which was her sleeping with Tariq St. Patrick. So it is fair to say there is going to be some trust issues with everyone, especially with Monet and Diana with their relationship being broken beyond repair in my opinion. Because of how we saw Monet grabbing Diana against the wall, Diana betray Monet and her exposing her secrets. And as the saying goes, blood makes you related, but loyalty makes you family, which is something that she taught Diana in Season 1. But for majority of the time in Season 2 and Season 1, we've just seen the Tohadas going behind each other's backs. And we also saw Diana even going behind Tariq's back when she put the crocodile tears on to take Tariq's QR code to access the product which was stashed on the roof. And now Tariq will be very wary of Diana because he did clock on to what she did. So these conflicts and issues with loyalty goes even beyond the Tarda family. Each character has this connection with Tariq St. Patrick in their own way. But I'm sure we're gonna see Tariq trying to find a way out from the Tahadas, which is another story in itself. So with that being said, drop all your thoughts down below, especially when it comes to Lorenzo killing Zeke, but also where you see Drew's character heading as well as Diana. And what do you think the unpredictable Kane is gonna be up to next? Drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section and I will be going into further in-depth individual character analysis, which is something that we're going to do during the Power Off season. So drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section. And of course, if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 2 Ghost and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.